8.13 now, Thursday morning, final day of hurricane season. Thank God it was quiet. November is also Diabetes Awareness Month. Louisiana, more than half a million adults have diabetes, and an additional 32,000 people are diagnosed each year with diabetes. Dr. B, Dr. Brent Wallace joins us from People's Health. Talk about diabetes and how to lower your risk. How you doing, Doc? Hey, Tommy, I'm doing good. How about you? I am doing fantastic. Chief Medical Officer of People's Health, what is diabetes, doctor? Sure. So diabetes, everybody knows, is a very common chronic condition. And and what it does is it really affects how the body turns food into energy. And so the way that works is your body, when you eat, breaks most of the food you eat into sugar or what we call glucose and then that sugar is released into your bloodstream. And, and when it goes up in your blood, it sends a signal to your pancreas to release insulin. And insulin acts like a key to open up your cells and allow that blood sugar to enter into the cells so that the body can use it. And so what happens with diabetes is one of two things. Either the body doesn't make enough insulin or it can't properly use the insulin that it is making. And so what that results in, obviously, is blood sugar can't get into the cells, the cells can't use it, and it builds up in the bloodstream instead. And over time, that's what can cause a lot of damage to your heart, your kidneys, your eyes, and all really all the organs in your body. That is the, the best definition I have ever heard, now I understand what happens. <laughs> I'm not kidding, really. Um, there are different types. What is type 1 diabetes? Yeah, so um, so typically a healthy immune system, everybody knows, protects your body from bacteria and viruses and all kinds of infections. But with type 1 diabetes, what happens is the immune system actually attacks the cells of that pancreas, specifically the cells that produce insulin. And so what can happen then is you, your body just can't make insulin or it makes very little insulin. And so that's why people with type 1 diabetes absolutely have to inject insulin in, into their body to survive. And typically, type 1 diabetes will appear in childhood, but it really can happen at any age. Um, and it does have a very strong family history association. So if you've got a sibling or a mom or a dad that have had type 1, you're at a much higher risk to have type 1. Is that in your genetic code? Yeah, it can be, and there's been a lot of research on it. The susceptibility is probably in the genetic code, and then there's an inciting event that actually triggers type 1. So what are the symptoms of type 1 diabetes? Yeah, so typically what people will experience is they'll have kind of sudden onset, blurry vision, maybe some fatigue or weakness. Um, typically they will have really intense hunger or thirst, um, and they tend to lose weight. In fact, sometimes a dramatic amount of weight. Yeah, and then nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain, which is probably why they lose so much weight. And, and like I mentioned, these symptoms with type 1 appear suddenly, and they will get worse until, until it's treated. All right, so there's also type 2 diabetes. What is that? Yeah, so type 2 diabetes is different. What, what happens with type 2 is that the body actually can't create enough insulin. So it is creating insulin, but either you're not creating enough to get that sugar into your cells or your body becomes what we call resistant to the insulin that is there. And there's a lot of research that's gone on for years and years, but we still aren't 100% sure why that happens. Um, type 2 is, is much more prevalent than type 1. In fact, it's over 90% of all diabetes is, is type 2 diabetes. And it typically develops in adulthood, and your risk actually increases as you get older. But unfortunately, we're now seeing a huge increase in type 2 diabetes in children that's most likely due to an increase in obesity and inactivity in kids. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. What are some of the symptoms of type 2 diabetes? So the symptoms are very similar to type 1, you know, that fatigue, maybe vision changes. Um, you can get some weight loss at the beginning of the disease um, and that increased hunger and thirst. But what's very different with type 2 diabetes is those symptoms develop slowly over time. And so because they develop slowly, a lot of times people with type 2 can live with it for years and not really know that they have diabetes. So that's why it's so important to see your doctor regularly to make sure that you're getting your screening test. It's a very easy way to check for diabetes by checking your blood sugar. And you want to do that as often as your doctor is recommending it. 
So what are some of the risk factors for type 2 diabetes? So really the biggest risk factor that we have is something we call pre-diabetes. And, and pre-diabetes is when your blood sugar levels start to rise. So they're higher than normal, but they're not high enough to say, okay, you've definitely got diabetes. So it's really a warning sign for people. But typically without any treatment or any lifestyle changes, pre-diabetes will progress to type 2 diabetes. So if you've been told you have pre-diabetes, you want to work with your doctor to really find ways to lower your blood sugar. And, and keep in mind that pre-diabetes is reversible, but diabetes is only treatable, so we can't 100% reverse it. So what there is actually a really neat tool online um, that can tell you if you may be at risk for pre-diabetes. It's at the CDC website. It's cdc.gov slash diabetes slash take the test and it's a little online quiz you can take answer about eight questions and it'll tell you what your risk level is and then you can take that to your doctor to have a discussion you gotta answer the questions honestly though. yeah definitely don't lie don't lie to us either you know right exactly you know that's that's important <laughs> isn't it honestly that people sometimes tend to they do, they do, yeah. I think they sometimes will tell you what they think they should tell you, but, but that's not going to help you. So, yeah, be, be very honest with us. If there is ever a time in your life to be truthful, it's with your doctor or your attorney. What are some other risk factors for type 2 diabetes, doctor? Yeah, so, you know, like I mentioned, age is definitely a risk factor. We see diabetes prevalence increase over age 45. Um, people with high blood pressure have a higher risk as well. And then definitely people that are not exercising, you know, usually three times a week. Um, there is a family prevalence as well. So if you've got a family history of type 2 diabetes, then, then you're at higher risk. And, and then, like I mentioned, that obesity and inactivity, especially in younger people, is a big, is a big risk factor. Right, let's take a break. We'll come back talk about lowering our risk for diabetes. Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health, is our guest. It is 820. That's time for traffic on WWL. 825, Tommy Tucker, WWO. Quickly back to Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. Staggering, more than a half a million adults have diabetes in Louisiana. An additional 32,000 people are diagnosed. Doc, would it be accurate to say type 1 diabetes, really you can not prevent it, but type 2 you can? Yeah, absolutely. You know, unfortunately, we don't have a way to prevent type 1. We have some great treatments for it, so that's good. But for type 2, there's really some very simple things you can do, and the, and the way you want to start is with healthy lifestyle choices. Um, you know, if you already have type 2 diabetes, really just making a few lifestyle changes will help you manage your symptoms, lower your blood sugar, and really avoid all those complications, things like heart disease and the nerve damage and, and blindness even. And the, the best way to start is exercise. So exercise um, immediately lowers your blood sugar, and it also boosts your body's sensitivity to the insulin that's already in it. So you want to find an activity you really like. Um, you want to make it a part of really your regular routine. Um, it, you don't even have to wait to feel the benefits. What's interesting, people that have diabetes that check their blood sugar regularly will notice after a walk, if you check your blood sugar, your blood sugar is going to be lower. It goes down immediately. And the CDC really recommends exercising for at least 150 minutes a week. So you want to try to aim for about 30 minutes a day, five days a week, and then you get two days to, to rest. Diet, what you put in your mouth counts as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, we talk about this all the time, but food is critical. It's very, very important. So you want to make sure you're eating nutritious foods, and that's going to be things like fresh fruits and vegetables, um, you know, whole grains, uh, low-fat dairy products. And then you want to go with really lean protein. So things like eggs and beans and salmon are going to be much better for you than those high-salt, high-fat uh, you know, uh, foods that you might eat. So cured and red meats, fried foods, full dairy products. Um, you want to limit your sugar intake too. And, and while, you know, a lot of people worry that, um, you know, drinking sodas causes diabetes, it doesn't cause diabetes, but it actually does exacerbate diabetes if you have it. So avoid those sugary drinks and really replace that with something like water or even black coffee. And you talk about being honest with your doctor. I guess your doctor can help you with some healthy lifestyle choices. Yeah, absolutely. We are here to help, and so it's always a good time to talk to your doctor. 
you know, about your chronic conditions, about your diabetes, but also if you're interested in starting a new diet or an exercise routine, you want to talk with us as well because you may have other conditions, um, and we we may want to give you some guidelines for, like, safe recommendations to, to start an exercise program or to adjust your diet and everything. So we're here to help with that. All you have to do is ask us. So with type 2 diabetes, if you're pre-diabetic, you can change it and prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. But once you have it, are you checking your blood sugar for the rest of your life? Yeah, pretty much, you know, and and we always kind of indicate that to people. So pre-diabetes you can have for, you know, a couple of months or even a year. You work on exercise and diet, and it goes away. It's completely cured. But diabetes, you are always going to have a higher risk of those complications, and most likely you're always going to have to be taking medications and checking checking your blood sugar very frequently. And here we are, final day in November. The clock is ticking on Medicare open enrollment, though. Yeah, absolutely. We've got about a week left. Uh, you're welcome to come by and visit us at our People's Health Medicare Center in Metairie, right next to Party City. Uh, we've got, we, you know, we take walk-ins, or you can call us for an appointment. We're here for you if you need us. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Tommy. Have Very a great valuable weekend. information. You bet, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. If you're